Back on TYT Sports, an interesting article from the allegedly fake news, New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I think that's, you know, I'm perpetuating it, but it's funny. Uh, the Nike Oregon Project, or is it Oregon? I'm gonna go with Oregon. Is they find the article. Are you talking about the place Oregon? Yes. It's not Oregon. It's not Oregon. It's Oregon. <laughs> you are Oregon if you think that that's. Or out of here. Uh, the headline was this a report by anti doping officials says the coach, Alberto Salazar, violated drug protocols mm. uh, with three to four elite runners. And what I found interesting about this story and some of the quotes I'll read is it kind of sounds like Salazar is, in this case, reminds me of uh, uh, the Green Goblin from. Spider-Man One. Oh, you know, like, uh, played by William not, Defoe. Not, yeah, not Dennis Leary. William yeah, Defoe. William um, Defoe. And like the actual, and I'm not saying like there was like a real sh like a power struggle inside his own mental instability. That's a really mean thing to say. But like it started off in the green, like when he starts to find out about the power and understand that the funding might stop, he starts to become more and more attracted to being the villain, even though he had no idea he was being the villain until yeah. he finally looked in the mirror. Well. When you read some of these quotes, it kind of sounds like once he found out about this one type of doping system, which has to do with restoring your thyroids. Um, I'm sorry, varied, various thyroid medications, testosterone, but more importantly, turning fat into energy. Mm. That was pretty much what it was. And it used to take, there was a quick way of doing it that was illegal and by a banned substance um, that was involved like an IV drip. And when every sport that gets overcomplicated with this stuff is like, pretty much if you have an IV in your body, you're probably putting something illegal into your body. Or if it's not an illegal drug that you're putting into your body, the method that you're taking it is you're illegal. Not yeah, you're not even Hydrated. allowed to rehydrate right. with IV drips. So. And which I actually think is, I think they should have some hydration techniques that should be legalized or something It's like, like when that. you like get this thing from a cup and then you like pour it down. You just throat. drink it. <laughs> Straw. It's crazy. It's crazy. He used it through a, a, a mechanism called, uh, it, it's a tube that made it go down faster. <laughs> so it's a straw, it is perfectly legal. It's a, it's a beer bomb. <laughs> but this happens in MMA, boxing, the Olympics are notorious. It seems like every person is sitting in some back room, like that of the, if you ever watched the anime Ghost in the Shell from 1995 with just IVs in their body. Especially if they're Russian. Especially if they're Russian. So, why do I make this guy, this coach out to be like the Green Goblin? Well, once he found out that you can make these IVs get into their runner's body in under an hour opposed to the four hour sessions, he was pretty much just being like, go, 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 get in your body, get in your body. And a lot of them didn't even qualify for the Olympic trials times because it seemed like it was taxing uh, on the runners themselves. So the tension, uh, the coach was Alberto Salazar, a running legend himself, who after his competitive career teamed up with Nike, the world's largest athletic apparel manufacturer to train elite runners, uh, which led to a tension between one of those runners, Ritzin Hing, the tension between Ritzenhain, I think, and Salazar over medical issues and methods of performance enhancement was not uncommon in the Oregon project. The vaunted team financed by Nike and led by Salazar to include some of the world's most celebrated runners. The report, some aspects of which have been reported by the Times of London, describes over 270 pages, a culture of coercion, secrecy, and possible medical malpractice in the Oregon project in an effort to make American distance running relevant again on the international stage. And lastly, in the report, anti-dipping officials depicted Salazar as a medicine chest whose door swung open for world-class elites on Nike's payroll. He provided or helped gain access to prescription dose vitamin D, calcitonin, ferrous sulfate, all of these illegal, Advair testosterone and various thyroid medications. Many of the drugs have no proven benefits for the runners. He's using, and this is what they're, they're sugarcoating. He was using runners in a funded by Nike project as guinea pigs. Essentially. Here, Francis, give me this. Let me see. Oh, oh, do you run faster now? No, you don't. Here, run faster! <laughs> I don't even know what to make of the story. I, 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 it's like Walter White meets Green Goblin minus the, the hovercraft. But I'm still, for some reason in my head, trying to work out, work out or not if it was James Franco that was William Defoe's son in that it was, movie. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was. It was James Franco. Why? Well, we have filmed. A plus, we need some of this uh, IV treatment to get us through some of these clips. I think we're on like a 15th This clip is our eighth today. clip, that's why I'm reading um, right for the story. By the way, written by Matt Hart, thank you. But I mean, one thing is, is for sure, has Nike or has Nike not addressed the situation to this point? Because if not, they really need to do something in order to address whether or not they were well aware of this, whether or 
there's a lot of highlighted stuff that you're freaking around on your screen. This is it? freaking you out. I was like, I didn't know if you you were pulling up a quote from Nike. No, no, I'm just looking through. I don't think because they this have is a brand, stock funding. There's a brand that, for uh, in my opinion, is losing parts of their market and have to focus on what predominantly their main market is, which is running and a lot of sponsorships involved in that. I think they're losing out to Adidas when it comes to a more fashionable outlook on sneakers and things like that. So I'm thinking for a brand, I mean, do you agree or disagree? The Ultra Boost, the fact that they're called, uh, Adidas are killing it. They all white. Well, I thought, he, here's why I bring. This is why I actually found the story to be super interesting. Most recently, we just celebrated Breaking Two, which was a Nike Marathon event set yes. up under Nike Marathoning conditions. So not like the Boston Marathon or the New York Marathon or the London Marathon. That's like a recognized as a global competition, but still separated between professionals and amateurs. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't even know if an amateur runner, if he were to run the two hour and ten minute marathon, which is disgusting to even think about could even win the competition if he's not like registered or sponsored by yeah, a certain yeah. group. But so in this case, Nike funds a lot, Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, they fund a lot of athletic projects. Yes. And rarely do they get reported on, especially if it doesn't, as they put it in the article, sound even legal. Because a lot of what they're trying to do from the brand aspect, to, to continue on that note, is to push the limits of what we know is achievable by an athlete. But, yeah, and you don't need to be professional in order to potentially achieve that. Of That's course. Yeah. And in addition to that, when you say like Adidas, Under Armour, Nike, they all have their mission statements, they all have their branding. But what's so interesting about it is that they want so badly for that athletic achievement to be done in their outfits. Yeah, of course. To say you can be this person because it was through Nike. Mm -hmm. I think the most great, the best example of branding, I would think, out of all of these athletic, is like the Red Bull brand. Yes. Because what you associate with Red Bull, besides all nighters, <laughs> vodka Red Bull, <laughs> hangovers. hangovers, is like extreme daredevil type stunts or extreme do, stunts, extreme can, sports. It literally, the, the idea of them, the marketing strategy around give, it gives you wings, they took and put Smart. it into just badass. Like they, they were an example that I, whenever I was in the sales field before I ventured into uh, on camera stuff, is I would always use them as a perfect example for how you build a brand. Like, when's the last time Red Bull needed a crazy advertisement billboard in the middle of nowhere? They don't need it because they're out there in some guy sky, like skydiving off the top of a building with no rope, and he's like, I drink a Red Bull. Or Red Bull are the ones that are filming it because they've got their own creative agency that does all that stuff. So that's a very smart form of marketing. Yes. Uh, Nike's form of uh, marketing, as I was mentioning before, is I think that fashionable uh, asset to Adidas is really cornering that market. I've always viewed Nike as my go-to for running shoes because they're, I think they've got mm. the best running shoes and I think that, uh, I'm not saying I feel like an Olympic you runner when running I'm running with now? them. What did I call them before? Trainers. trainers. But trainers can be fashionable shoes as well. You conformist. Pig. And I will always still, <laughs> always, always still be Adidas for football boots, by the way. That's never going to change. You've always owned the Predators, right? Because I bought one pair of Hypervenoms, which are the Nikes. Hypervenoms. And they ripped at the front, and I was just well, devastated. That's like, but that goes the same for a lot of Not athletes. No, no, I'm saying it goes the same for athletes. Is Whatever they're most comfortable in. Yeah. Nike Hyperdunks are the best shoes to play basketball in, according to myself. That's what I play in, Matt and Kobe's. But like, to some people, like you have a different foot. So, for example... I find that the shoe market in not just like the UK, but in soccer, world football, to be fascinating. Yeah. Because I don't like, I feel like do Lionel Messi and Ronaldo's boots sell more so than any other boots? I would imagine that would so. make sense. I don't, I, in my, opinion, they, they in my opinion, I don't think anyone pushed more so for a football boot than David Beckham did for Predators. Is that Adidas? I was Adidas Predators, and they're still coming around, but people why are still- why was it? Is it the, well, the front, you should have like people a rigid used to, front. Yeah, rigid front, people used to think that the, the ridges on there would make the ball swerve the way Beckham hit it, like literally bend it like Beckham. That was kind of where that hole came from. Uh, and now they're actually bringing back the, the old boot style where Beckham had the tongue that was very long on the Predators because they moved away from that. So yeah, players help sell boots more so than anything else. Ronaldo, his own style, no one has their own boot. That's the difference between like, uh, oh, our styles. No totally one, do that. People have their form of boot, like there's a Neymar style of- With uh, the colors and- There's a the there's color like a style Brazil and there's a, and there's a messy style of F50s, which are the Adidas boots that he wears, but there's no messy shoe, you know? And there's no like Ronaldo shoe, because I don't think it, Nike control that market. Like they bring them in and they're I like, no, like you get your own style. It seems but pretty interesting. I mean, Nike did do the Neymar Jordans, which I thought was all a really, really good idea. Yeah. Um, because rarity like that sells like wildfire. 
don't know. I just find it so amazing that like the we corporations are not people. Yet we look at Nike like it's a person. No, yes. it's not. Um, and Shoe Dog, which actually is a very, very good book about the story of Nike being founded, it's Phil Knight who founded Nike, um, and all of that. Like, there's also people call it like a blind eye, like they got to turn a blind eye to this. But it seems like this thing has gone under not enough investigation as to what is being legally done and not legally done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think it's surprising. Doping in not just running, but as we know in from the Russians and cheating in the in the Olympics, Olympics, pretty much every Olympics, it seems like. This is always something that comes up, and I think it's needed to be investigated more and is interesting, but it's not as interesting as you can say if, like, I don't know, the Nike uh, Oregon facility, I'm sorry, the Under Armour facilities. No, it's Nike who does Oregon Ducks football. Yes, it is. If their facilities happen to be, there's a back room of Green Goblin (laughs) balls that explode. Sorry, not that. uh, Doping mechanisms. Is William Defoe a Ducks fan? I don't know. Is Dennis Leary a Ducks fan? What was he again? Dennis Leary's a comedian. Oh, he, he looks exactly like Willem. He does. Yeah, Willem uh, Dafoe is in Boondock Saints. Dennis Leary is in Rescue Me. Dennis Leary is a great stand-up comedian. Willem Dafoe is in Green Goblin. No. Michael Keaton is going to be the new Spider-Man villain. He is. Yes, he's also yeah. He's in the trailer for it right now. He's, Who's the new Spider-Man? Uh, that kid from The Impossible, the movie. He's, uh, he's like twelve. Yeah, he's a young English guy. Basically, Baby Groot Griffin Freitas is the is the friggin' new Spider-Man. Hey guys, quick question on the Spider-Man movie. Quick answer. Do we need another Spider-Man movie? Uh, Marvel, yes. Why? Marvel. Jesus Marvel are doing it, and it's not a... Do we need another Spider-Man Do we need movie? all these different movies? That I feel that I'm going to give it a chance because Marvel is the creative force behind it. They haven't Do made a Spider-Man. Do we need another Spider-Man? Why not Spider-Woman? Why not Venom? Oh, wait, we're getting a Venom, and it's Tom Hardy that's playing it. Seriously? Yes. Which is going to be a very similar outlook, I think, to a Deadpool-style movie. What you've learned from this clip is that the Nike Oregon Project is funded by Spider-Man. And William Defoe. And William Defoe. I need to transcribe this video.